As we consider chemical dependency and addiction as an illness among other illnesses, like most illnesses, there are causes and symptoms that come from the cause of a particular illness. For instance, if a person has contracted the flu, they might experience vomiting, shakes, sweats, fevers, fatigue, muscle ache, etc. And if they were to complain about one of those five symptoms as being the primary problem, the primary cause of their discomfort, they would not be able to address the true cause of the condition. In what is referred to as the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, page 62 does a remarkable job painting an illustration on how these conditions come about in the average alcoholic and what drives the mechanisms of addiction. To illustrate this point further, I'd like to offer the following drawing. So what we have here is a tree. It is a fruit-bearing tree. I need to mention that this tree happens to be a selfish and self-centered tree. Selfish and self-centered. We would consider it a diseased tree for the sake of this illustration. So as a fruit-bearing tree, it bears fruit. There is an outcome from this selfish and self-centered tree. And it's, it's kind of a weird type of tree in that it doesn't produce one particular type of fruit. It produces many types of fruit. So you might have, let's say, apples, pears, plums, grapes. It's weird. It's a weird tree in that it produces all kinds of different fruit. From the concept of addiction, what we might put down here are things like, this is a tree that produces extreme alcohol consumption. Cocaine use or other stimulants. Prescription pill abuse. Cannabis use and other THC products. So many people come to addiction treatment because of these reasons. These things have gotten out of control in their life. They have attempted success before by perhaps concluding that this, this substance use is a problem, and so I'm going to pluck this from the tree. And no longer is the tree going to have that. I can handle these other things, though. Perhaps later in life, a person concludes, uh, I, I, you know, this is making me be less motivated around the house. Um, I cannot continue to get hung over like this, but I can't seem to stop this one problem, and so I've eliminated everything else but this one problem. I should be okay. In fact, by the time people have arrived to treatment, they've probably had their own attempt at cleaning the whole tree from all of its fruit. However, this is a fruit-bearing tree. And as a result, just because the tree was cleaned last spring, by no means would a sane person think it's not going to produce fruit again. Again, page 62 in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous mentions that selfishness and self-centeredness is the root cause of this tree. So below the surface in actuality, 
is extreme selfishness and self-centeredness. And then it goes on to say that, that this is driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-pity, self-seeking, and self-delusion. So these four factors are mentioned. It's probably not at all an exhaustive list, but the idea is that this is a selfish and self-centered tree, and it has four fuel sources, similar to a hybrid vehicle having two fuel sources. It's believed that that vehicle is going to get from point A to point B through one of those two fuel sources. The alcoholic addict believes that these fuel sources actually work for them prior to recovery. They believe that this will fuel them to get from point A to point B successfully. So the four sources of fuel are fear, self-pity, self-seeking, self-delusion, driven by a hundred forms of these things. It's as if this is the nutrients, the soil, the manure, however you want to conceptualize it, that nourishes this selfishness and self-centeredness, out of which comes substance use of various kinds that seems to produce predictably. Now, when a person comes into treatment or recovery, initially they're here because of their substance use, but we're hoping eventually they'll come to see that this substance use, the alcohol, the cannabis, the prescription use, etc., these things are the fruit of their problem, not the root of their problem. Quite often, a person comes into recovery believing that these are the root causes to their problem. If they, if they were to stop drinking, if they were to stop using, if they were to stop certain things, substances, then their problems would be solved. However, many people complain that their problems are ongoing. They simply don't have a coping mechanism for them anymore. They don't have the alcohol. They don't have the cannabis. They don't have the prescription pill that would make it so that they at least had the self-delusion, the belief that they're doing okay. So we try to encourage people to not mistake the fruit with the root. And in fact, starting on page 62 through to page 63 in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, there's mention of how these things, fear, self-pity, self-seeking, self-delusion, drive this self-centered tree. And it drives it to the brink of destruction. So quite often, what needs to happen is focus needs to turn from up here to down here. And many people simply don't know how to do that. The problem is underneath the surface. The problem is with the soil. There is confusion about what is needed. Most addicts and alcoholics want to address these things. But they are unclear as to how they could best do it. Now, the addicted population tends to not want to delay gratification, let's say. They tend to, by and large, want to expedite quickly uh, an effective resolution and satiation of their restlessness, irritability, discontentedness, among other things. So I have seen many individuals uh, put forward Herculean effort to address fear, self-pity, self-seeking, self-delusion, hoping that by addressing these things they're going to have an impact on their selfish, self-centered core that's going to result in producing different fruit. However, I have a story I'd like to share that I think exemplifies the effectiveness of not relying upon yourself for this type of, type of project. 
True story, a few years back, um, we were growing garden beds in our backyard. Um, we grew pretty effective garden of uh, various vegetables and fruits. And then we allowed a season or two to pass before we ever attempted it again. And when it was time to attempt it again, it had been covered in weeds. And my best idea, I was going to need to get a huge wheelbarrow, fill it up with the dirt that was in the garden beds, bring it back and forth to the front of my house where hopefully you know, I'd line up somebody to come get it. I'd have to buy all kinds of soil. Um, I was looking at like maybe a $500 project, probably in two weekends. A lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of resources. And then it dawned on me that I really don't know anything about soil science. And I happen to have a friend who is actually a horticulturalist. And perhaps I should contact her to find out if she had an opinion. And you know what her opinion was? She said all I needed to do was to remove the top inch or two. Remove the weeds. Remove the top inch or two put in a particular mixture of just two bags of soil as a top layer, churning it up a little bit. And she advised me to plant vegetables that were already starting to grow. There, there might be, you know, instead of seeds, you buy these other plants that are one inch to two inch in length. You plant those, and then when weeds start to grow, which they will inevitably grow, you will be able to tell the difference between the weeds you don't want and the vegetation you do want. I would have never come up with that plan ever for myself. I would have made the project infinitely more difficult than it needed to be with the best intentions of growing some decent produce in my own backyard. Similarly, it seems as though a sponsor or other individuals can act as a horticulturalist in your life. When you have difficulty getting underneath the surface and you wouldn't even know what to do once you dug things up, you've got people that know what to do. They've been trained. They've learned. They've lived it. This is part of their life. They go underneath the surface and do excavating from time to time. And through reworking the nutrients in the soil, change starts to occur to what was a diseased tree. Some treatment is introduced into the soil that starts to bring about results from this diseased tree that are desired instead of undesired. So I hope that that illustration can help in any way to understand what brings a person into treatment. It could be the fear, self-pity, self-seeking, self-delusion. It just happens to manifest itself in substance use. The substance use is a symptom, not the cause. The cause are these things. And as a person sticks around and starts to work the program of recovery, they start to notice other fruit along the way. For instance, many times over, people start to realize that they have quite a tree of denial. These things are fueling psychological processes not just products that they're addicted to, not just behaviors that they feel compelled to do, but private thought processes, such as denial. There are a few descriptions of denial that can be helpful, such as minimizing, blame, we could go on. And now, like, all things that are growing, 
this condition is only going to continue to develop. It's not going to stop developing just because a person decides to do nothing about it. Perhaps they leave a tree alone for years. If anything, it just continues to grow and grow and grow. And so these mechanisms of denial would be considered automatic and chronic. They grow effortlessly. They are progressive. Things continue to worsen in these categories and not improve. So with the understanding that denial is a growing mechanism by which it progresses and is automatic, quite often it is difficult to have any sufficient degree of insight. If you have an automatic behavior that goes unquestioned, and it continues to get worse and worse and worse and worse, and life continues to get more and more and more unmanageable, with your response being how to manage and manage and manage the increase in unmanageability. It can be extremely difficult for you to even notice blaming for what it is, intellectualizing for what it is, mechanisms of denial, defense mechanisms, that can keep a person continuing to use or drink and can keep them from getting at these deeper issues in their lives. So once again, the idea is that there are others that are far more equipped than perhaps the, the lone individual at being able to help shine a light on these dark areas, help unearth things that are hidden, excavate the whole situation, so that a person can find themselves producing joy, happiness, freedom. Something has happened underneath the surface to take a human being that once produced quite the opposite of to all of a sudden, miraculously and unexplainably, be producing happiness, joy, and freedom. If there is a way of doing that that is rumored to exist in Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous, it would be to somebody's benefit to put that rumor to the test and find out if it really is true. That they've been avoiding these things for no reason. They can get at them with someone else's help, change up the whole system that would produce entirely different fruit. And that is ultimately my hope for you. So I thank you for tuning in today, and I wish you all the best on your journey of recovery.